at the moment. They're just so traumatised by everything around them. One little face stares out as if life is simply too much effort. Well, we're not sure if we're looking at a completely blind bear or a semi-blind bear. She didn't definitely see the apple just now, so hoping just that the smell will kick in and start realising that nice things are happening from now. The fourth bear has a grotesquely swollen belly. He's literally bursting out of his cage. This is a bear that's been in a cage for a very long time. She's got horrific uh, wounds on her head from where she's repetitively banged her head against the bars of the cage. And uh, her paws are all cracked, as you can see. She hasn't stood on solid ground for a long, long time. So she's got some bile leakage as well. A second blind bear simply terrified of what is going on around him. As he grows calmer, Jill reaches the bear with the lifeless gaze. She's obviously had a chunk out of her ear. She's probably been bitten by one of the other bears. You see her paw missing already, her back leg missing, and she's just skeletal. An emergency health check is scheduled right away. Only when the fragile bear is laid out on the surgery table is the full horror of his condition realised. He's been caught simultaneously in two leg hold traps, one here on his bottom um, right leg, and uh, there's also another snare wound around the neck here. He's about 60 kilograms in weight. He's quite the thinnest bear that we've ever seen. Um, look at his ribs just sticking out. I think he's going to have a very slow recovery because he is in such a bad way, but um, gradually, as when he begins to wake up, then we'll take the fluids out and we'll see then how much he gets and then see how he does the rest of the day. With all of the new bears made as comfortable as possible for the night, at last it's time for the entire team to celebrate their arrival. They have been far too long in coming. Out in the enclosures, there is a sense of urgency in all of the bears as they try to satisfy their desire to eat. In the wild, moon bears would be preparing for their long winter hibernation and attempting to substantially increase their body weight. Here at the rescue center, they won't go into full hibernation, but during the colder winter months, their food consumption will almost halve and they will all become less active. Even diminutive Francie is trying hard to put on weight. Since the summer, she's slowed down considerably, but for such an elderly and almost toothless lady, she shows consummate skill in shelling her favorite seeds and nuts. The moon bear's coats are becoming thicker and shaggier. The coat of Caesar has changed dramatically it's entered a new phase of hair growth and has taken on a much darker color. The coat gives him so much protection that he's even prepared to climb into the pool and have a swim. And there is some very exciting news for Caesar. Two young Tibetan brown bears were rescued by some Buddhist monks in the Sichuan mountains. When they could no longer handle their charges, Animals Asia stepped in and offered the bears a home. They've just been released into an enclosure, and if they put on enough bulk, everyone is hoping that in time, they will become the new companions for Caesar. Peanut, the zoo bear cub, has become a real little terror. He is everything a cub should be, inquisitive, mischievous, and full of fun. And much to everyone's delight, he has become best friends with another young cub called Daly. For the adult zoo bears, rehabilitation has gone at a slower pace. Last week, they began to venture into their 